But, but there's a flip side, isn't there? I mean, there's an economic price to independence. I mean, it might allow a future Scottish government to do things differently, but, and I don't want to relitigate all the things we said about the Brexit debate, but there is, independence is going to imply borders, it's going to imply impacts on trade, and it's going to impact on the Scottish economy negatively, isn't it? Is it? Don't you think? No. Why not? So, let me explain. I mean, I've just, um, I've just published a paper last week, which, which I would encourage which people... Which you brought with you. To, I brought with me, <laughs> which, which I'd encourage people to, to read if they're interested, the roadmap for a Scottish green in, industrial strategy. And, and what, I've, I've written this in conjunction with Sir Martin Donnelly, who was the mm. permanent secretary at Bayes, and uh, Professor Dominic Holder from the London Business School, and we've tried to focus on what we can do. And actually, if I, if I start by looking at the history, and, and I use, to do that, I, I use our experience with population. And I've done that going right back to the 1850s, and I've quoted from a book uh, by an academic called Anderson that's shown that Scotland's relative population in the United Kingdom every single decade since 1850 has shown relative decline. Now, of course, there can be a myriad of reasons as to why that's happened, but a key element of that is relative economic opportunity. And what I want to do is, is I want to change the dynamic. I want us to show, and some things we can do within the devolution settlement, but what we can do to grow the Scottish economy on a, on a much higher sustainable basis than has been the case in the past. So give me, let, me give you, let me give you two examples. You know, I talked about green energy. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you look at the skilling report, it talks about the potential to create up to 325,000 jobs. So dwarfing what we have today in oil and gas. Now, you need to have an alignment uh, across an education sector between higher education, further education, developing people with the right kind of skills to work in, in those industries. But also you have to understand that, or we have to understand, that you're doing this in, in, a, in a competitive global environment, that on the basis of everybody is chasing energy security, that we're a smallish part of the offshore wind market around the world. But we need to make sure that we do something that we failed to do with oil and gas and that we failed to do with the early years in green energy, and that is to attract jobs in the supply chain. Now, there was one quite significant announcement a few weeks ago, Sumitomo, are building a cable manufacturing facility actually in the Highlands. But one of the things I've suggested in this report is we have to do things differently and that the First Minister has to accept responsibility for this directly by having an industrial council in his office and making sure you've got an alignment between government and business and actually take the actions that will allow delivery. So we need to speed up the, the rollout of the 28 gigawatts that will come from Scotland, for example. That's the